so our next speaker uh, is uh, Campbell Catito, um, who is uh, the um, who who is uh, a public health uh, physician uh, and works uh, within the the health pooled fund uh, in South Sudan. Uh, and it brings a really uh, a, another really interesting uh, perspective on um, on uh, on health worker incentives uh, from that con context as well. So let me hand over to Campbell. Good morning. Uh, I, I, I'm going to go through with you the experiences that the government of South Sudan, uh, in support with the Health Pool Fund, uh, have had with the issue of remunerating health workers in a situation where there is conflict and where there is a, an interface between uh, humanitarian organizations trying to get uh, uh, work done as quickly as possible in dangerous uh, situations. And there are NGOs or implementing partners who are more uh, developmental in nature, but both these two are trying to make sure that the workforce is at least in place and that it is well, dis well distributed. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, a, a, a map of South Sudan. Uh, the Health Pool Fund works in this colored part uh, of, of, of the country. There are 10 former states, and they've since had some political upheaval, and uh, not upheaval, but political demarcations which have made them many more than this, up to 34. And the part which is not uh, colored, that those are the two states in which HPF does not work. It's called, I've got a colleague here actually who works in these two states there, who's here with us. So there are uh, over, over about uh, 1,000 facilities, staffed by about 9,000 health workers. Uh, health Pool Fund funds a third of those 9,000 health workers, uh, approximately. Most others are paid by the government of South Sudan. Uh, there's a smaller proportion which are paid by other multilateral partners like WHO, UNICEF, and uh, humanitarian organizations. Uh, the, health, uh, the humanitarian partners are not part of the HPF system in terms of uh, the, the fundings. Uh, so uh, the main challenge here was to try, when, when, when you look at the different uh, uh, implementing partners who are working in South Sudan, there was this challenge of uh, different health implementing partners paying their staff different salaries. And this, of course, has a disruptive uh, effect on uh, how the health workers get distributed and uh, how they move themselves in terms of where they want to go and get better pay. A sustainable, the aim was to have a sustainable, properly deployed and motivated health workforce in service for the poor and vulnerable populations. And uh, like I said, we observed salary differences between these, uh, which, is, uh, which caused movements between the different implementing partners and leaving some areas under south. Uh, so there was a request from the government of South Sudan for their main partner, which is Helpful Fund, for information on salary discrepancies and to try and see how there could possibly be a way of harmonizing this salary so that the intra-agency movements may be curbed. Uh, salaries and trains in workforce movements from IP to IP and IP to humanitarian partners through the Sudan electoral payroll system and through routine IP monetary meetings. This is how we're able to gather the different salaries which, 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 which were being paid to these different agencies. There was also information on, on humanitarian partners' workforce salaries, which are not on the South Sudan implementing, um, South Sudan in, uh, employment uh, payroll system. Uh, and there was also a lot of uh, uh, personal contacts that we had with the different uh, uh, humanitarian uh, partners. So our conf confirmed observations, which were uh, uh, done through non-structured meetings uh, and uh, through looking through the payrolls through the South Sudan electronic payroll system, where that uh, the lowest paid workers were from government, uh, the higher with variation were in implementing partners and development areas, and uh, humanitarian organizations paid uh, much, much higher salaries. And this, of course, is uh, 
is, is, is expected as the humanitarian workers are working in more insecure relatively and uh, more dangerous areas. This of course is the, the problem of uh, causing quite a dis disruption in the sense that at the beginning, in the, what we want now compared to what will then happen afterwards in terms of the development of salaries is, is then uh, a disruption in, 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 in the smooth ending over of the humanitarian salaries to the government salaries. Government development partners and community partners agreed then on a way of harmonizing salaries. And this development went quite well uh, uh, when it was started in 2015 up to 2016. And after 2016, the whole macroeconomic environment changed, whereby uh, there was a, a lot of hyperinflation, uh, the, 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 the South Sudan is bound, uh, uh, fell significantly against the US dollars, and the health workers started demanding to be paid salaries which are at least livable salaries, and this meant uh, giving them US dollars. The problem was the US, US dollars were being changed. The, the IPs in most cases agreed to pay US dollars, but they were being changed on the parallel market, and this keeps on changing daily. So the whole harmonized salary which had been agreed on 2015 got disrupted. So, Minister of Health is currently trying with the Health Pool Fund and the humanitarian organizations to come back again onto the drawing board and try and see whether they can uh, develop a, a future uh, harmonized salary scale which would be more sustainable than the one uh, which, which was now uh, getting uh, all disturbed again. So, how we went about this and the challenges we had was really respective this was, of course, respect, uh, retrospective data collection uh, from the SEPS reports that we had. Uh, some of them are incomplete returns, like the usual health management information systems. Uh, we also had meetings with the uh, implementing partners, but these meetings were not structured because they were meetings to do with implementation. So this was more of like an implementation research. Uh, so this might not meet the robust academic research criteria, but it's still relevant. And uh, in terms of what, what we, the insights that we have is that despite the challenges which you have named about, the Minister of Health would still be able to use whatever data that you are able to show under such circumstances. Uh, and also the position that we had as HP as a helpful fund made us able to access certain data which might not necessarily be accessible usually. Salary data is usually uh, quite uh, sensitive. And also that by using this data, we're at least able to change practice into getting this harmonized salary way. Uh, there's now, like I said, an initiative to get the humanitarian partners also join into this uh, harmonized salary scale for the future. I'm sorry I had to think so quickly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh,